You are up and live. Great, thanks, Terry. So hi, everyone. I think uh, Cindy, my mom, is going to kick it off here. So welcome, everyone, to our fourth community update meeting. I'm Cindy Smith from Great Falls Construction. And uh, also, I want to thank BCTV for getting this out to everyone. We wish you, we could be there live with you in person, but this is great to do during this COVID time. Um, if you have any questions, please send your questions over the phone. That would be the easiest way. And our phone number is 207-839-2744. Or you could email and send the email to jasmith at greatfallsinc.com. So we can begin maybe by introducing... Go ahead, John. Well, hi, I'm John Smith with Great Falls. Hi, everyone. I'm Julie Smith with Great Falls. I work on business development here. And uh, we have a new colleague to introduce to you all. Her name is Becky Parker. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I am Becky Parker. I am the property manager for JCS Property Management, which is a part of Great Falls. I'm looking forward to working with you all. Great. Thanks, Becky. Good. So at... Oh, sorry, you have something to say, Mom? Right, so let's begin. <laughs> yes, let's begin. Good. As Mom mentioned, if you have questions throughout uh, the duration of the update, please do give us a call. It's probably the easiest way. I have uh, Brother Joey on the phone lines here. So 207-839-2744. And it should be scrolling at the bottom of your screen as well. So without further ado, thanks so much for tuning in uh, to this fourth um, update meeting. We're, we're kind of excited to, to uh, unveil some new progress we have on the project, um, the edge at Berwick. For those of you that missed our last update meeting, we did unveil uh, the name of the new site. So uh, we'll now refer to it as the edge uh, at Berwick. And if you missed that update session, I believe uh, BCTV has it on their streaming, their website, um, and you should be able to, to look back at it. Uh, to hear more about why we named it that and how we came to that name. So we'll move on to today, today's agenda. Um, so today we'll discuss our mission for the project, our objectives and our timeline. Um, we have had uh, some time now to marinate with the project and really spend some time thinking uh, creatively about the project. And so we're excited to unveil um, the progress we've made on defining our mission objectives and in our timeline. So uh, our mission is listed here for you and I'll take a moment just to, just to read it to you. So the Edge at Berwick is a neighborhood and community focused development which seeks to transform the former industrial center of Berwick into a vibrant active contributor to the downtown. Great Falls has been constructing with a purpose since 1988. The purpose of uh, for the Edge at Berwick is to invest in strong, sustainable and suitable downtown growth that will complement both the history and the progress of Berwick, Maine for years to come. So with that, that will be the mission we refer back to often throughout the planning, throughout the entire execution of the project. And um, certainly if you have any questions about the, about the mission statement, we hope you'll reach out. So moving on to our objectives, our objectives here, we added um, some photos of, of some of the staples in the town of Berwick that we've um, since we've been around, we've been frequenting and, and checking out. So our objectives uh, for the project, and these are obviously very general and, and purposefully so. I think there's a lot to focus on down there. It's a big parcel that we're working with here. So our objectives are to invest purposefully and sustainably on the site, to create a safe and inviting neighborhood for downtown Berwick, to foster community connection and growth, and to create great opportunities for Berwick to continue to thrive. So great, anyone, uh, mom, dad, or Becky, anything to add to our mission or objectives before I move on? Well, I'd just like to add, can you hear me okay? Yes. You can, yeah. Um, that, you know, this actually, this represents a fair amount of effort and thought um, in sort of what's going on down there. And what we've just, you know, the, the mission and the objectives really are gonna help, continue to help guide us in, in a certain direction. So as we 
talk about these, um, I think we're going to pause and see if anyone has any questions or comments on those. And it would be really helpful because we do sort of check back and, you know, when we're questioning different things or directions that we want to go um, design wise, we want to check back to these, to this mission and objective. So with that, I think we want to, Julie, want to pause right here, do we, for any questions or comments? Sure. Do we have any calls or anything? Anyone calling? Not yet, but I think we are on a little bit of a lag here, so we'll just wait a moment. We can move forward too if a lot of questions do come in, and we'll, we'll just stop and take them. I think we can continue, Julie, and hopefully we get some along the way. Great, move move forward. Great. So um, moving on, we we as you all likely well know, we did host um, a couple listening sessions with the community, and so we've created uh, one of my favorite little pieces of art here, a, a word bubble to discuss kind of the uh, the most um, reoccurring, I guess, themes in in what the town would like down there on that site. And so you'll notice the larger uh, font indicates that it was brought up multiple times. And I do think that the walkability, restaurants, um, communication, art, sustainability, and local were, were the most mentioned. And um, certainly the other smaller fonts um, were also mentioned as well. So uh, we, we do think that the site, actually, in fact, we know one of, that the site will, will be walkable. There will certainly be spaces for restaurants. And I'll pause there to say that what exists on the site will depend on what interesting, what interested business um, tenants would like, where they'd like to be on the site. And if they'd like to be on the site, I will say there is a large list of, I would say, 20 or so um, businesses that have reached out either existing or, or future businesses that have reached out that are interested in locating on the site. So that's really exciting. We're, uh, we're working with, uh, with some of them in, in further discussions um, as we move the site plan forward. Our communication, we, we, we think has been quite, quite clear and quite often we we're hosting, uh, every two months we're hosting this greater community update session we had our kickoff neighborhood um, meeting uh, this week as well, and we remain available. I'll have my contact details on the last slide here for you to call or email. Please do reach out. I think we, we all feel that communication is key to the successes of this project. So we wanna hear from you and, and we want to arm you with the facts to, to spread the word and, and the news. We're really excited about this project and what makes it so enjoyable is our connections with with the community. So please do communicate with us and, and we'll look forward to, to that. And so thanks. Um, art, I think uh, we've definitely heard a lot um, from artists that are in the area interested in including art on the site. We'll certainly have um, art included there. We're working with the design team and in the, the way the buildings look and the aesthetic of the site will be something that's studied very, um, very intently. And um, I, I said this in a past meeting, but I think as, as artists in the community, I think you can particularly appreciate um, the design, the, the blood, sweat, and tears that, that are poured into the design of, of, of a, such a large site and the importance of really making sure you get, you get the vision correct and you get the, the, um, the aesthetic uh, correct. So we've certainly been spending a lot of time thinking about that. And, um, and so I'm sure the artists in the community can, can attest to the, to the work behind the scenes that happens. Sustainability is also another, um, another important part of this project and something we'll certainly be 
uh, looking into and, and analyzing as, as the design unfolds and how we can make this a site that will last for years and years to come. And so we'll certainly be analyzing that. And then finally, local, I hope you can see it. It's, it's in light blue there, but towards the bottom, we've heard, uh, I think we've heard that word the most and we, we, we discussed, I think at length that we agree that keeping this site um, open and available to local businesses and, and residents will be, will be really important. And we, we definitely are um, making sure we touch upon that and focus on that as the, as the plan unveils. So I think we'd like to hear from the community, uh, whether you reach out now or after the fact, um, please do uh, take a moment to look at this word bubble, make sure we've covered uh, what, what you've said to us and make sure we have um, in here everything that you'd like to see on site. And if we don't have that, I, I do encourage you to reach out and, and really let, let me know um, so I can certainly add it onto here and make sure that we've incorporated it in, in the design of this project. So I'm not sure if we have any. Not yet. Does anyone have anything to add to the word bubble? We'll leave it up for a second longer and then move on. Okay. So, uh, so moving on, we've uh, incorporated um, a timeline into this presentation. I, I, I said this at a former meeting, but if I had an FAQ for, for this project so far, I think numbers one through 10 would be, what is your timeline? And so we thought it was really important to incorporate the timeline into the presentation so that y'all can see what we were working on and where we've been and where we intend to go. So I'll run through this um, quickly. I, I wish we were in person together because I think it would be more of a dialogue if we were, but certainly reach out, uh, like we've been saying, um, you have any questions or concerns, whether that happens now or after the presentation. So uh, as you might remember on Halloween of 2019, we purchased the former prime tanning facility. Um, and then on November 6th, uh, we hosted our first listening session at the, um, at the Baroque Town Hall with the community. And so you might recall if you were there, it was largely, it was very well attended and we were upstairs um, in Baroque Town Hall just listening to what you all had to say um, and what your hopes and dreams were for the site. And then a month later on December 5th, we hosted our second listening session with the community also at the town hall. And we continued to listen to the community and what your wants were and, and your needs were for the site. Uh, February 10th came and then we, start, we switched it from a listening session to update session. So we hosted our first update session in person um, at the town hall to discuss updates since purchasing back in October. And then some time went by in April, uh, rolled around in April 14th, we had our second update session, which um, as you all know, has to had to um, unfortunately take place virtually. Um, June 15th, we had our third update session, uh, which also took place virtually. Um, and then August 11th, uh, we hosted our first neighborhood meeting with Butters. And then here we are today, August 13th, uh, on our fourth update session. So you might be asking yourself, what happened in between that time? So we've listed in, in a quick summary kind of what we've done um, behind the scenes between meeting with the community to just uh, really show you transparency and also demonstrate the amount of work that actually does go into, into the planning for a project of this size and scope. So, um, from November to December, we had various community member meetings. Those ranged from interested tenants uh, for the site, as well as um, folks that were uh, had concerns about the site and environmental conversations happening. So those were kind of an example of some of the various meetings that took place from purchase to now really and continue to take place as well. Um, on the 7th of November, so 
just seven days after purchasing the site, we, we ran a legal ad in the paper for um, civil engineering as a request for proposal RFP. Um, and we received the civil proposals uh, in early December. So once receiving those in early December, we reviewed the proposals and ultimately contracted with Sebago Technics uh, for their civil work. So Sebago has been busy down on the site and I know you guys have have uh, at least virtually met Craig, uh, Craig Burgess, who's the, um, the project manager uh, from Sebago Technics is working with us. And so uh, also between December and February, we've had various community member meetings and calls, um, again, mostly with interested tenants, uh, but also with uh, community members who had uh, ideas to share for the site as well. Um, and then finally, between February and April, so, some time passed. We had our kickoff meeting with Sebago and, and the town to talk about the design standards down, down there in Berwick, which are um, the standards, if you're not familiar, the standards that will, will follow within the development of, uh, of the project. We also had a kickoff meeting, uh, an informal kickoff meeting with the DEP uh, Department of Environmental Protections to just talk about the site. Um, and I know Craig Burgess was busy uh, and Sega Technics was busy meeting with town departments like public work, public safety, et cetera, um, as well as various other community members um, who have insight to the condition of the site. We also experienced between February and April, um, and like everyone, the COVID-19 crisis, which, um, which has, it has impacted us um, as it has impacted everyone. And, so um, we, we feel we've done a really good job of keeping the plan on track and, um, and keeping it moving forward, even though we've all been working remotely and haven't been able to really assemble together and um, really experiencing what everyone else is. So it's, it's not a unique um, experience, I'm sure. So I'm sure you can all understand that that does create some, some uh, delays in, in planning, but nonetheless, we've we pushed forward and we're, we're pretty proud of that. So, um, so as we move on between April and, and June, we've had additional community member meetings and we've also hired local team members down in, uh, that are ne live near the Berwick area to start cleaning up 27 School Street. For those that aren't familiar, 27 School Street is a residential duplex located on School Street, sort of diagonal from the intersection where Cumberland Farms is. And so, um, so we've had some team members down there. Um, they're now fully mobilized on site. They're really working on um, finishing that uh, renovation for the duplex. And we're hoping to, to lease up those um, duplex units by uh, for November 1st. And so Becky Parker on our team, who you all met earlier, will be um, starting to, to advertise those two um, duplex units for lease coming up here in, in the near future. And if you have interest, or if you know anyone interested in, in living there, do reach out and let us know. So finally, between, uh, between June and, and um, August, we've had additional meetings, primarily with um, design, design team members to talk about the overall site plan um, and, and really where things can fit on site. And um, that's been a really, um, obviously important exercise. I think I alluded to it earlier um, for the artists that are watching, I think you can appreciate the fact that um, making sure you get all the pieces laid out appropriately and they all mesh together and really work well together um, is, is of paramount importance for the success of the project. And so we've been working really hard with, uh, with the design team to make sure we have that correct before we share a draft with you. We want to feel really comfortable with that before we share it uh, with anyone. So um, that being said, the momentum will continue uh, to, to take hold of uh, multiple meetings scheduled to talk about um, the finalizing the draft for design to share and we're excited about, about that movement going forward. So I'll pause here to see if anyone has any questions about, um, about what we've done in the past. And if no one, uh, has called it. We did get someone who called and asked. Um, so they're a resident that lives. Um, I think it says Pine Hall, uh, Pine Hill location. Sorry, um, asking about the timeline on cleanup and any COVID delays. So um, I think we'll get into the design. I mean, excuse me, the timeline on the cleanup. And I, I'm not sure 
everything. If by cleanup you mean on the large site and, and you mean with the buildings, or if you're talking about the environmental cleanup. And if you're talking about the environmental cleanup, I'll let dad jump in and just give a quick summary about the environmental cleanup. Yeah, thanks, Julie. I can jump in on that. I think um, all of that work is going to happen as we begin the construction on the site. It is a, um, I think we've conveyed the fact that it's a brownfield site and all of the work that we do is going to be supervised by the DEP and they'll be on site engineers um, helping to make determinations on what to do with anything that we find there. But a lot of work has been done and we're pretty, pretty sure we know um, the, the areas where there may be some things we're going to encounter. So we, we're not anticipating um, a, a whole lot of problems with that. So when it comes to the environmental side, that's really what we're at. It's just gonna be part of our construction process and uh, but a well-monitored part of the process. And then as far as the cleanup of the rest of the site, um, it's really gonna, once we get started and get our site plan, we need to get it finalized. And when you get it in front of the planning board for, for, perm, you know, for um, review and then for permitting, then when we start construction, we'll be, we'll be cleaning up as we go there. Great, thank you. Um, and I think it's worth saying that the site right now sits and has a temporary cover system on it. So it, it's temporarily a fix right now. And so there's no environmental concerns um, on the site with the temporary cover. The, the clarification point I think that's worth, worth noting is once we start construction, we'll be required to put a permanent cover system in. And um, at that time, like dad mentioned, we'll be um, certainly supervised by the Department of, Envir of Environmental Protections, as well as um, engineers. So that um, I think that's an important for point of clarification. And then finally, the, the other question was, uh, is there any COVID delays? And I, um, I think I, I mentioned that um, certainly we, uh, we're seeing some delays like most folks um, kind of start to unravel and uh, we, we don't anticipate there to be significant delays, although it does change the way we will design and, and think about um, the way we execute the, the work in the future. And I think most people are still can attest to the fact that you're still trying to figure out um, this post COVID world and that takes time to do. And I, I think we're, we're moving forward as, as quickly but responsibly as possible on that. And I don't think we anticipate any COVID delays. I mean, obviously materials could become delayed depending on trades and et cetera, et cetera. But we feel as though we're, we're on a good track um, moving forward. I don't know if anyone else has any, on the team has anything to add about COVID. I would only add that we do have... Oh, well, we can't hear you. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I would only add that we do, you know, we're, we're meeting virtually a lot more and this, this part of, especially this part of the process is very interactive part of the process. So we, we tend to get heavily involved in that. So the virtual, while the virtual meetings are a great substitute for face-to-face -face meetings, they're not a full on replacement for it. So that's, when we talk about COVID delays, I think that's the biggest part of our delays is just that it takes a little bit longer to get to the to, to the point we want to be at when all, all of our meetings are virtual. We have called some face-to-face -face meetings at our office outdoors because we just need to. We need to get together with the engineers and and um, the design team. But that's the really the biggest impact I would say at this point. Julie already alluded to, you know, we don't know what's around the corner for materials and equipment, but we'll we'll deal with that stuff as they come up. So that's really all. I have to add. Great. Thanks. I'm going to move on to probably the slide everyone's excited to see is the looking ahead side, uh, slide, excuse me. Um, and so looking ahead, what we see is um, we see from August to October, um, we'll continue to work with our design team to finalize the site plan. 
um, and uh, to share at future community update meetings. And so our goal for when that will be ready to share with you all um, is between October and December, we'll have the site plan ready to share informally at the community listening session, um, which I have scheduled here for October 14th at six and December 15th at 10. So just a quick moment of pause there. Um, it, it's in, certainly our goal and intention to have the site plan ready to share with you all informally then. We will be required um, to, like everyone, to share um, the site plan with the planning board. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the planning board process, but for those of you that are not familiar with the planning board process, I've outlined it here from, from December to February. Um, the planning board process uh, is in Berwick. Um, and we have Steve on the line too. So Steve, feel free to jump in if you'd like. But um, the planning board process, for those of you that aren't familiar, and if you are, my apologies, but it's to uh, it's really to make sure the site plan fits for the town. It's a it's a it'll include public hearings. So be sure that you do engage in the process should you be interested um, in doing so. And so um, I, I've kind of I won't bore you with reading everything I've written, but really take some time to um, take a look at the planning board process. Make sure you're familiar with it if you'd like to be involved. Um, and Steve, I don't know, did you want to add anything about the planning board process? Well, so hopefully it's a smooth process. Uh, we have a very seasoned group of planning board members um, and they work closely with our planner, James Bellissimo, who has been really the contact person throughout this project um, uh, from its start. So um, people can ask questions of James if, if you uh, come into the office, he's always available. Um, but it's, we are hoping that it's a very smooth process, which I expect it to be, and um, fulfill the guidelines that uh, the Envision Berwick and Comprehensive Plan has laid out. And I know uh, James has talked with um, Great Falls about all the things that are going on. So um, it should be a fun project, fun process. Great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. And the only thing I, I, I neglected to mention is that we, um, the, the planning board process does take time and it is obviously a mandatory process and a, and a really, a really good process at that. So um, we, we've outlined December to February, but it really could be more than that. Um, maybe less, but likely a little bit more, more time than that. So really when we start will depend on when we get um, planning board approval to, to on the site plan. So if, like Steve mentioned, if you have other questions about the planning board, um, James Bellissimo is, is the person uh, to contact um, on it. Anything else to add about the planning board process, dad or mom or Becky? No, great. So moving on to spring 2021, uh, spring 2021 is, I, we have vision to put a shovel in the ground uh, on the project and, and, and really get started uh, down there. The timeline of the work right now is, is TBD. We don't know how long it'll take us to, um, to execute the work. It will really depend on the final site plan and then how we can uh, appropriately phase it, keeping in mind how that can affect um, other properties on site, neighbors, traffic. Really, there's a lot, um, as I'm sure you all, you all are familiar with, there's a lot to really consider um, as, as we start construction and we'll absolutely be considering that. So, um, Along the way, uh, between now and spring 2021, there's there will be countless um, opportunities for you guys to the public to be engaged, ask questions, really, really get in touch with us. And um, like I said, my contact information will be on the on the last slide. Should you like to reach out, but um, really feel free to reach out to me at any time. Not not hard to find. So I'm going to pause right here really quick to see if anyone's checked in with any questions. We did get one um, from, from a, uh, I think a resident that called in asking about parking on the site. Will it be parking on site or street parking? So we certainly intend to have uh, parking on the site as the site plan uh, takes shape. We'll have um, more of an idea of how many buildings will be on site and how many parking places will be allocated for those buildings. I can say the Great Falls um, team will, will really be working hard on making sure we get the right balance of parking as it relates to businesses and residents on site. 
And I'm going to let dad jump in on this one too, because I know parking is one of his favorite topics. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, actually, I will, this, this is a prime candidate for um, shared, shared parking. It's going to be a shared parking environment on site. There obviously, there will be offsite parking, um, but that's, that's municipal or, you know, town parking. So um, that's for whatever is going on in town, but we, it's our responsibility to look on site and make sure that we have an appropriate level of parking on site. And the way we feel about that, I mean, if you think about any place that you go um, during really busy times, it can be challenging to get a parking space. And it, it really, it's up, you know, we really have to work hard to find the right balance. There should be a, a, a little bit of stress on the parking at times during the busy times. Um, and if there isn't, I would say that we have too much asphalt in the area. And if there's stress on the parking all the time, then we don't have enough. So it's a really um, intricate exercise that we go through. Um, there's, there's standards that we need to be followed as well. So the combination of the standards and the exercises that we go through, are that's all the work behind figuring out what the parking looks like, where it is, how it supports the built environment that we'll have on site. So a lot of effort goes into that. And uh, for anybody that is really uh, interested in talking further about it, I, I, I love to talk about it. I love to talk about how we generate that, how we, how we go through it. And um, it's, a, it's a, a pretty uh, in-depth exercise. So feel free to call anytime. Great. So we'll move on to the to our final slide of the presentation. So if you haven't had a chance to call in uh, or email in your questions, um, please do. We'll, we'll be around for a little bit longer. So finally, we just want to talk about what the community can community can do to help move the project forward. I think the first the first point is to remain patient and positive. I think what makes like I mentioned before, it makes this project so enjoyable in development in general, so enjoyable for us at Great Falls is. Uh, the interactions we have with the community, and we really enjoy that. And so I, I do encourage you to reach out to us. And um, if you have questions, if you're wondering why we haven't gotten to work yet, I think I've had quite a few conversations with folks about it. And I hope that you feel armed with the facts now and are able to kind of spread the facts uh, throughout the community as, as to what's going on behind the scenes and, and why we haven't put a shovel in the ground yet. It's really taken... Um, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears so far. And as we look forward, it will continue to, and we enjoy it. Um, and we're excited to, to share this project with you all and really see the success it, it will um, it will be in, in your town. So um, just to parlay nicely with that, reach out with questions or any tenant leads for the project. And a lot of people are hoping to see um, certain types of businesses down there on site. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, what businesses end up on site will really strictly depend on what, what business owners reach out with interest to locate on site. So while we agree it would be really important to have uh, a certain business on site, we really, um, it will really depend on if that business wants to be on site, of course. So um, if you have any interested uh, neighbors or business owners that you know, please, please reach out um, to me. That'd be great. Remain engaged. Like I said, there's many opportunities for the public to to be engaged in the process and really know uh, firsthand what's going on. So we um, will continue to host these update sessions every two months throughout the duration of the project to keep you all informed and up to date on what we've been doing and what we intend to do. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions in between then, please do reach out. Uh, a good way to also keep up to date is to follow or, or like the Facebook page uh, for future meeting updates, photos, et cetera, et cetera. And that uh, page is The Edge at Berwick. Um, so for those of you that do Facebook, feel free to, to like that, to see the updates there or, or just follow it. Um, our next community update meetings I've listed here for you, October uh, 14th and December 15th. Um, whether those are in-person or virtual is TBD uh, at the moment. So uh, they will likely be virtual at least for the October one, but I guess you'll have to uh, stay tuned. <laughs> I think uh, it'll, um, It'll, as it comes near, we'll post it on the Facebook page uh, for you all to, to, uh, to be more informed. Or if you have a question, if it's virtual or not, just give me a call. My uh, telephone number, the office telephone number is there and my email address is down there as well. 
So that's that's what we had today. I wanted to thank you all for for tuning in. I don't know if anyone else on the team wanted to jump in with anything I missed or or forgot to mention. No. So I have a couple of questions that have come in. So I'm just going to uh, start kind of asking them. Um, so approximately how many, uh, how, excuse me, how much space will be available for mom and pop type shops, local businesses slash local businesses that would like to move downtown? So there, there will be a lot of space for um, smaller shops. I think that one of our exercises will be to see if the buildings that we have planned, um, if we may have too many commercial offerings, um, we would have to we would have to change them to some other offering on the ground floor level. But the ground floor of all of the buildings we envision to be commercial spaces. So um, that that's the initial thought. If it ends up that it's too much space and we can't support it with parking or whatever, then we would adjust accordingly and, and start um, sort of restricting some of those to, to a different use. But the, so the answer is, I, I don't have a, a square footage, but I can tell you that there, there are a lot. What I would encourage anyone that's interested in um, that type of use to please reach out to Julie or any one of us here at, at Great Falls um, and start, start the discussion. We do have letters of intent. We have one letter of intent that's in, in circulation right now. Uh, we have a residential tenant that, that communicated with us quite some time ago that they want to be on a list. So it's not too early. And it, it really, the, we can have all the visions that we want, but if we don't have businesses or people to move into the space, then it's pointless. So it's never too early to communicate on it and that will help uh, help us and it will inform us on how many commercial spaces. If we think there's too many and we, and we wanna restrict it a little bit, um, having names in front of us and people to talk with will help give us the confidence to not restrict that, but to, right. to, to make more offerings. So that's yes. where we're at. As well as early on, when you when you jump aboard early on, we know the sizes that you need for square feet, foot and everything. So if you think you want to be there, early on is probably the best time to do it and to think about it. I mean, we envision a lot of people there. We're just hoping that you vision being there. So great. Uh, the other question we have is. Uh, what are your early thoughts on how the streets and communal spaces, green spaces, hardscaping, et cetera, will look and feel like? Yeah, um, I, I can take that one. So I, oh, it's hard to hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, can you, can you move closer? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Is that better? Yes. Um, I, this is this would be much easier to answer if we had the site plan sort of uh, available to share and that's just a work in progress and it just you know it will be shared when when we can um, but we definitely envision um, lots of pedestrian circulation space um, our streets that are running through there we, we basically have two streets running through mm -hmm. the property right now and it's sort of kind of uh, breaks up into quadrants really essentially. Um, and we are looking at, we're looking at cir vehicular circulation, we're looking at pedestrian circulation, we're looking at um, sort of you know, open space, green space areas, um, and, and just looking to meet all of the, um, you know, the requirements of a, of a great vibrant downtown. So uh, they, I guess that's, in, there will be some hardscape in there um, some sort of plaza is not the right word, but yeah. you know, uh, areas, um, some of the things that I mentioned a while back about, you know, the pandemic and the impact on our design. And I'm, I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to design with that in mind, um, real estate and space and the space people need is just very different now compared to what it was pre COVID. And so some of the some of the bullet points on that are we need to look at 
the ability to be outdoors. So the ability for businesses to have a space to be able to spill outdoors as they need to, um, to allow people to be outdoors in, in decent weather. Um, the other factor um, in, in some uses, um, people are gonna need more square footage in their, in their buildings. Some are gonna need less because they're gonna be virtual, but others are gonna need more because they need people on site and they need room to distance. Without that room to distance, they're really restricted. So the, you know, what we do for the indoor built environment will really, um, you know, we'll make sure, we wanna make sure we can support it on the outside with spaces. So it'll be probably some wider sidewalks than we might normally have. We're, you know, in some areas we're looking at 10 foot sidewalks to be able to have tables on the outside and still have the ability to circulate outside. Um, we're looking at parking, you know, smaller parking areas um, tucked in certain places so that people can, you know, the, the um, vehicular traffic can comfortably access. And then we'll have some bulk parking further away for during those busy, busy times. Um, the, the smaller spaces will just be, they'll fill up quickly, but there'll be room elsewhere on site to park. So um, hopefully it answered the question, I guess so in, in general, I can say um, we're really, we're all excited to get the site plan in circulation. It's just not quite ready yet. Um, but for the, for the person that asked that question or anyone, um, if that didn't quite do it and you have a more specific follow-up or anything, just feel free to call, just call into the office and I can address that. Thanks. And I, just to just to piggyback off that, one of the um, one of the things one of the discussions we started on the Facebook page, the Edge at Berwick, was a discussion about um, we know there'll be some sort of memorial um, component to the park, and um, so we started a discussion about what that might look like. And so we really were you know we're still looking for suggestions from the community. We've got some great suggestions from folks that have that have commented on that post so feel free to, to look on our Facebook page um, if you do have specific ideas or um, suggestions for the park um, on site would be great good I don't think any other questions one more thing well, I guess that's all. We, we can maybe stick around for another minute or so because I know we're on a lag here to see if anyone else falls in. While we're waiting for that, I will uh, mention again, I, I mentioned earlier, but uh, Becky Parker on our team is, is the property manager uh, for JCS Property Management, which, which is a part of Great Falls Construction that will manage the properties once they're, once the construction's finished, finished and tenants move in. And so that uh, the duplex at 27 School Street, uh, like I said, we're intending a November 1 move-in date um, is our goal. And so uh, you'll, you'll start to kind of hear the buzz about trying to find tenants interested in that duplex. So if you do have interest or know someone who's interested in learning more, uh, definitely reach out uh, to myself and I can, I can introduce you over email to Becky and, and start that conversation. So it looks like we haven't had anyone call, anyone else call in or email in any questions. So uh, like I mentioned before, if you're watching this after the fact or uh, you haven't had the opportunity to call in uh, yet to ask your questions, please do. We're here, easy to find, happy to talk, um, and hopefully sometime soon be, be in person together again. And for now, we'll, we'll plan to meet you all on Wednesday, um, October 14th at 6, uh, 6 p.m. And for right now, it's TBD, whether that's in person or virtual. Our hope is in person, but we'll see where we're at as a, as a community then. And the announcement will be made on our Facebook page one way or another well in advance. I think that's it for me. Anyone else? Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, BCTV. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Great yes, thank you all. Thank you all. Okay. We'll wait for okay. Terry to tell us it's okay. See ya.
Okay, I'm ending the meeting. Thanks, Terry.